um, waves on a string virtual lab. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get to it. So right now I'm on the course homepage, and I'm going to go to course materials, then content, and scroll down to the waves unit. Click on that, and then I'm going to click just whatever the first page is. And then what I want to do is I want to look in this sidebar, and um, I'm going to just since I'm just looking for the wave or the lab, I'm not going to you know read anything in the content even though I highly recommend that you do that before you take um, do the lab. I think it makes the concepts a little easier. I'm just going to keep looking at the sidebar until I can find the page that has the lab. Okay, so it's right here. So I'm going to click on it. It's going to download here, and it'll also show in my downloads folder. So I've got that. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of it. And I'm going to um, put my lab over here like I do with all the other labs. And then I'm going to, um, these are my formulas. I'm going to click on this to get my simulation going. I'm going to download the simulation. Sorry if you guys hear some noise. Um, our next door neighbors are having some construction down at their house. And I'm sitting outside. Okay, so um, let's see. So it says, first we're going to test the relationship between tension and wave velocity. Um, right here. So it says, choose pulse and fixed end. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose pulse. And then fixed end is already chosen, so I'm good. And then it says set the lower slides for damping to none and tension to low. So I'm going to put damping to low and tension to low. And then it says uh, turn on the ruler and the time using checkboxes. So I'm going to do a ruler and time. And it says use the ruler to measure the length of the string and record the length in the data table below. So this is our string. I guess so that it would be um, two, four, six, eight. So this would be seven point two, four, six, seven point six. Um, so I'm going to write that, and this is in centimeters. Okay. Then it says, click the green button to send a pulse through the string, and then use the timer to measure how long it takes for the pulse to travel five times. That's three trips down and two trips back. Okay. okay, I don't know what that does. So this will be our first one. And you're not going to get exactly because this is the second one. Because, you know, it, I had to hit that and then I had to go over here to hit that. Here's our third one. Here's our fourth one. And this is our fifth one. Okay, so it's 29.31. So I'm going to put this 29.31 seconds. Time to travel one link. So that's going to be 29.31 divided by 5. That's 5.862. Okay, so here's what I just did. Okay, then it says calculate the velocity of the wave using the equation above that has displacement and time. Okay, so the equation below above that has displacement and time, it's going to be um, this v equals x over t. Okay, so I'm just going to write this here. So you've got that, okay? And your x is going to be the string length, and your um, t is going to be this t. Now it says the distance to travel one length, okay? So you've got 7.6 centimeters, right? So um, we need to turn this into meters, okay? So we need to multiply this by um, put one on the top for one meters. 
and then 100 cm on the bottom, and that'll get our centimeters to cancel out. So I've got 0 0.076. Okay, because this formula, you have to use uh, meters in it. Okay. Now I'm going to set the tension to moderate. Okay, let me stop this. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to measure five lengths. Okay, it's going to go a little faster this time. Then I'm going to set the tension to high. Um, it should go a little faster, yeah. Okay. So then, after I do that, I'm going to set it to high. Stop. Okay. Um, and then, since it's going so fast, you can actually set it in slow motion if you want, and that'll make it a little easier for these two. So I'm going to just make a note here that... Um, You can set these to slow motion. Okay, I'm going to put this note in the other one too. Um, that might make those a little easier to read. Okay, and then it says next we're going to test the relationship between wavelength and frequency. Okay, so we need to set this oscillate part to no end. And then we're going to set the frequency to um, 1. We need to set, sorry, we need to set to oscillate and then no end. Okay. Um, and then we're going to set the frequency to 1. Okay, so now I'm at 1. My amplitude's at 0.75. Damping is at none, and tension is back to low. Okay? And um, it says measure the time it takes for a wave to travel the length of the string. And this is easier if you choose slow motion. And start with the wave paused. Okay. So I've got the wave paused like this. I'll start the timer and then it says it will automatically start when I start the wave. Okay. So we're just going to do it once. Okay, so we're going to measure the length of a single wavelength. And then again, we'll use the pause button. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it first um, to get my time. And then I'll do it again to measure. That way I'm not trying to do both at the same time. Okay. So I want to make sure that like... This is what I'm including, which I, I think it was. I just wanted to be sure. That's what's nice about these simulations. You can, if you're not quite sure, um, or you want to make sure, you know, you want to check your work, you can just really quickly, here we go, you know, run it again. It doesn't take too long. Okay, so time to travel the length of the string, six seconds. Okay, my wavelength. Okay, so I've got it paused already, so then I can go, and so the wavelength is the distance from one point on the string to the exact same next point on the string. So um, we can use these little green ones if you want. Um, so we have like, this one's at zero. Actually, we want like this. That'll be one wavelength. Um, I usually do it from crest to crest, so this is kind of um, weird for me, so I just want to make sure I did it the right way. But this is like 1.2 and this is like 1.2 so that was right so I'm going to do um, that's 1.2 centimeters right so I have to do 1.2 centimeters um, times 1 meter over 100 centimeters and so I'm going to get um, 1.2 divided by 100 0.012. Okay. Now to get, um, let's see, measure the length of a single wavelength. We just did that. 
uh, repeat your measurements using a frequency of 2 hertz and then 3 hertz. So basically, um, we'll, re we'll hit restart. We'll move this to 2. Okay, so we can move it to two, and then you'll do the same thing. You'll keep the damping at low, and the tension, or the damping at none, and the tension at low, and then you'll run it again. Okay, so that's what that is. Then you'll move it to three, keep everything else the same, and then that's where you'll record that. Then you'll switch the tension to moderate, and put your frequency back at one. So if, if I was you, and I was gonna do it really, make it take less time, um, what I would do is I would like, um, see how we had it at one. I would have it at one and then I would do it on low and then I'd have it at one and do it on moderate and put, you know, my numbers here. And then I would do it at one and put it on high and record my numbers here and then go to two. So I'm doing, and then put my tension back to low and you know record a number here and then put my tension at moderate and record a number here and then put my tension at high and record my number here. Now for each of these remember you're going to record something here and record something here so while you're doing the lab these will be the columns that you're going to actually record things in. Okay. Um, and then you can come back and do this other part. Okay, then for your um, for your speed calculation, you're going to use the total length of the string divided by your time. Okay, so the total length of string. So I'm just going to like uh, make a note here of that. You know, which we know we got you know in the previous one, and then you're going to use this formula. B equals x over t. Okay, so I put both those notes there. Okay, then um, we're going to do it again. We're going to do something else again. Okay, so we're going to reduce the amplitude to 0.3 and set the end value to fixed. Okay, so I'm going to keep it fixed. It says, doesn't say we should change the oscillate, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put my amplitude at 0.3, so this will get me close and then I can make it perfect there. Um, we want high tension. We want the frequency to zero. And we're going to start the simulation on normal. Okay. So high tension. Frequency is zero. Simulation is normal. Okay. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to start it. And as we're doing it, So I want where it's got a long loop and it looks kind of like a jump rope. So yeah, it's starting to get there. There we go. Can you see how we're getting this? Yep. 
this looks good. And I'm going to set my frequency at 039. And now I'm going to do this again. But now I want two loops. So I want where like the cent um let's see. While I'm doing this, if I can find one where the left one is not moving at all, that would be awesome. I don't think I'm going to. Now, do you see how it's starting to kind of swirl a little bit? That's kind of what we want. We want basically um, this, this green one. There's going to be a point where this green one won't move. And that's what we want, that center green point. We're getting close. but it's still moving. Okay, do you see this? I just want to restart it and see what happens. There, wait. See how we're close? You see how that green dot wants to stay there? So I'm gonna hit reset again, see what happens. Mm, not quite. Okay. So I want where this green dot stays in one place. It's not quite doing that. See how it wants to stick and then it moves? See how now we're sticking on that red one wants to stick? So we need to go left a little more. I still wanted to stick with the red. Okay, now it wants to stick at the red on the left, you see, so we need to go over a little more. I'm just going to try and pick the best one. Let me try point eight three. see if that's a little better. Okay, so this one seems to be the best we're going to get, so I'm going to stick with that. And then now we're going to do where there's four loops. So um, with four loops, we're going to have um, we're going to have um, four loops, and it says all the green balls will be stationary, which um, which is basically like um, well, you're not going to get all the balls because then you'd have um, one, two, three, four, five, six loops, but we'll get there. Let's see what this does. Now we're close to three. Do you see that? So at three, we're close. You see one, two, three, four. So let's restart it. Oh, it's really close. Do you see that? Let's try it again. It's set for a while. There we go. You see how that's so close? Let's 
see how close we are. Let's do one more so I can get it a little better. That one's pretty close. I'm going to stick with that. 1.66. Okay, and then um, and then you guys will answer these questions at the end. Okay, so that's that's the lab. Um, so it's not super difficult, but it is kind of time consuming, especially this um, last part, um, trying to figure out these loops. And this first loop, um, you might be able to get something a little better than that. Um, but all three of these actually. Um, but that's how you do the lab.